Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in again to another one of my how-to videos. Today we're gonna to go into something that means a lot to me. My granddad taught me it from a very young age and it's very, very important in pregnancy, pregnant women in particular, um, but pretty much anyone, when they're growing up, they should learn these movements to move into moving. Um, any athlete should know how to do this. Pregnant women especially should know how to do this to then recover after pregnancy. Uh, but honestly, it's for everyone. My beautiful partner here is now pregnant as well. So we're gonna go through the levels of all of these in a pre, during and post pregnancy type of development so that you, if you do need to learn these skills and these exercises that you can pick them up through here, but also you will see her grow and her get stronger and all of that while you're learning this as well. And you'll know where to do in what stage of the pregnancy and go from there. But don't limit it just to that, this is for everyone. So I've devised levels to all of this and today is the level zero. So this is what you must know before you can move on to anything else. Please lower the egos, don't go ahead into the other videos. If you don't fully have control of these, there is no point in moving on into the next ones, all right? This is what we're gonna do. So the first three exercises that we're gonna use is diaphragmatic breathing in a lying position pelvic floor holds or Kegel exercises, you would have heard these be called in a lying floor position and TVA activations and then walkouts in a lying floor position. Now this is just the safest place to go. Obviously the spine is loaded so if you can't control it properly, this is the, the best place to get it and we're gonna understand the brain to muscle connections so that we can feel it in our bodies working before we progress to a seated position then a kneeling position, then a standing position, and then a moving position with all of these same exercises. Okay, here we go. So diaphragmatic breathing to start with. The cue I give, what you see she's already set up for, is one hand placed on the chest, one hand just placed on the upper stomach, making sure you're off the rib cage and it is just entirely on the stomach. You're gonna breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, not big breaths, but not short breaths either, just normally. And what we're aiming for is that the chest isn't moving anywhere near as much to what the stomach's moving. So as we breathe in, we're filling our stomachs. As we breathe out, we're feeling that release in the stomachs. Let's have a few here. There we go. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Now as you're doing this, you might notice that the chest is expanding. That is because you are not diaphragmatically breathing. If you are, the chest ship will expand a little, but it should be able to stay still if you've got good control of it. And the stomach should be the one that's coming out and in. Now this is in a relaxed state right now. We're only focusing on the breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. What this is doing is Filling your diaphragm. Your diaphragm contains all of the body's internal central organs there, and you're securing that area with air. Very, very important for any movement exercises that we'll go into later in life <laughs> and on from there. Deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Excellent. Good with that? Cool. All right, if you've nailed that, let's move on to step two. If not, pause this video, practice that a few more times, and we'll go from there. All right. Uh, exercise two is the pelvic floor holds. So if you're not an infant, you would have experienced this as trying to stop yourself from going to the toilet. Uh, very easy way to explain this is your pee hole, your poo hole, <laughs> for both very similar in male and female but then they come through. We have a pelvic floor, which lies just above those holes, but traps our organs in there. So when that contracts, that's that feeling of stopping yourself from peeing or secreting any number twos. Cool. So that's all we're gonna be working on. Now, being able to do that is the first part. Some people can't. That's you, that's great, it can be trained. We will get better at it. The next best thing is building the stamina in that. So, as we go through, my partner's here lying on the floor. 
as if you're about to pee and you gotta hold that in. I would just want you to tense your pelvic floor and feel that contracting. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Now what we're gonna do is build the stamina to it. So I just like to start with a three second hold to go with, but we're gonna try and build up to 10 seconds. If you can contract and hold it for 10 seconds while diaphragmatically breathing, while doing everything else, that's a really good pelvic floor. Okay, so three seconds to begin with. And when we are contracting, you might feel a strength spike and then it decrease off and you can sort of hold the decreased level. We, I'm talking build up to that top contraction and hold it up there for the entire time, all right? Ready to go? No, this is just a pelvic okay. floor. Yeah. All right. So you're going to tense, pelvic floor, three, two, one. Let go. How was that? Good. It was good. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that contracted mm -hmm. spike and then it sort of dropped off a bit or mm -hmm. you held it? I held it a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. Let's try five seconds. Yeah. Contract. One, two, three, four, five. Release. Same again. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to 10 seconds. Let's see how we go. And contract. Five, four, three, two, one. Keep it going. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. She doesn't need to work on it. There we go. If you do, now you know. So knowledge is power. Now you just do is discipline and practice. So don't be shy. If you haven't worked this before, it does lose its stamina very, very quickly. So if you can only tense it and hold for a couple of seconds, or if you feel that spike and then it drops off and you're holding a subpar contraction, just keep working on it. Start it just contracting 10 times, three sets of 10 a day, uh, or not a day, three or four times a day to start with, and then extend out the duration of those contractions for time as you go. And just keep track of the numbers and how long you can hold it for and go from there. Cool. Last exercise. Uh, TVA activation, so your transverse abdominis. So what I've said is two index fingers together and then thumbs together. Now your index fingers are gonna go down just touching that pubic bone there. So find that. And then the thumbs just forming that triangle sit on the stomach there. So you can feel any ab contractions that'll be happening, all right? You've got that? Mm -hmm. Good feeling there. Now, the index fingers, you, that's on a bone. So you don't wanna be feeling like they're moving or the hips are tilting or anything. The index fingers should not move. What should happen is under the thumbs, you're just feeling that tightening from the abs contracting and locking that in place. Now, there's a few things we're gonna be working on here. The first level was the diaphragmatic breathing. So feeling the stomach expand. Now, with the TVA, locked in place, there's a limitation to what it can expand to. So you might feel as we diaphragmatically breathe that it's restricted of air. But what that's doing is it's creating a nice tight cavity that's protecting the organs and going through there. Secondly, you're then gaining endurance in your abdominals so that when we move into you needing to clench or you needing to walk or move or anything else, you have the endurance and the stamina there that you're using it and it won't go into things like the multifidus or lower back taking over or the pelvis not having good control and lead to copious amounts of other injuries. All right, so we're gonna go into this. All the force is gonna do, take a good deep breath in, tense the TVA and just keep working on that diaphragmatic breathing with the tension held. Good. And you can feel that tense under the thumb. Awesome, you can maintain your breathing. Good. Good, keep that contraction. Now if you can maintain 30 seconds of this with that abdominal muscles tensed and the breathing regular, it's really good. Good. And relax. How was that? Good. How was it right? Awesome. It's good. 
Okay, the next step from there, if you're really good at that, is learning how to hold the hips stable through the TV activation with the breathing while the legs move. If you can't do this, you can't actually walk properly. <laughs> all right? <laughs> so, all she's gonna do is exactly the same thing. She wants to feel the pressure under her thumbs. She wants to diaphragmatically breathe, creating that strong, condensed <laughs> cavity with the organs. And she, one step at a time, she's gonna lift the leg up, put it down, lift the next leg up, put it down, and just see how far out she can get before this starts to get agitated or too hard and wiggles around. All right, if you can get all the way up to straight legs, you then walk back in. That's known as mastery level and you're good. But if you can't, you then have a reading of how far out you can get. That's your reading. Just know that that's where you are. You're gonna keep working on it and go from there. All right, you ready to go? So, squeeze that TVA. Focus on the, wait, wait, don't move yet. Focus on the breathing. Squeeze the TVA. Get that tension on. All right, don't let anything move. You'll also feel your low back sort of pressing into the ground because the front the abs are crunching. So it shouldn't lose that hold. That's it. Now you've got that hold. Breath is good. All right. One leg at a time. Yeah, you really feel. So nothing should change here. Hold that contraction. That's it. Good. Don't let the hips wobble or move at all either. As your legs get out further, you're lengthening the lever, which makes it harder. That's strong, that's good. It's really good. Keep holding here. You feeling that under your thumbs? Good. Keep working, keep working. <laughs> hard? Yeah. Yeah. Very hard exercise. There you go. So she's a very strong core and very, very good TVA activation, and it was difficult. Now, what I would say is build to 10 repetitions of that, controlling your breathing. Would that test you, you reckon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the level you're currently at. That's what we will work on um, in between this and the next video before we move on to the level one exercises. Okay. Cool.